All right, welcome back to the Rope Access channel. In this video, I will talk you through one of the exercises I did for my level three reassessment. So let's get into it. In January, I did my level three reassessment and that was like the four or fifth time. So for me, I had a very high expectation of my own level and how I was going to perform. And I did not perform as I wanted the whole week, except on assessment day. And that's the one that matters. But I learned a lot of uh, cool new things. For one is that I did a live stream. You can check it up here. I will link it there and down in the description. And in the live stream, I made a major uh, major mistake so check it out if you can find it i was on a single point of attachment while performing a rescue that's why we train so the reason that happened was i was really nervous for the live stream for for some reason i felt i had to perform and well i'm only human these things happen so I planned on filming the whole week and making a big video out of it, but the thing is, I barely finished day two and the exercises are long. I wanted to do the full videos, so it was already at an hour, 18 minutes. So that's not going to work. It will be a two and a half hour video. So I will just do separate exercises. I have a couple I can show you. I did not film everything. Uh, most of it is just GoPro footage, except for this one. There is a combination of the static camera and GoPro footage. So I will talk you through the video. I will explain on the GoPro while I'm doing it and uh, fill in my thoughts now looking back at it. So let's run the video and see what happens. Oh, the exercise is climb up, perform a hanging hole, put a dummy into a eight climbing situation, then rescue the dummy from that eight climb situation, lower the dummy down on the floor and come back on a pull through on sharp edges. Because I was very tired from traveling, I prepared properly and I, while executing the exercise somewhere, I got mixed up and wanted to come down with the casualty on myself because why not? It's simpler at that moment. But uh, Mateus corrected me halfway through uh, one of the instructors and told me, no, no, you have to lower the casualty down. So I changed it back again. And looking back at it, I like the way I, how I solved that part. I got myself into trouble, but got myself out of trouble as well. So let's roll the video and let's see what is going to happen. Before we get into the video, subscribe to the channel, because if you subscribe, the channel numbers grow and if they get bigger, I can do better videos. Like Ryan says, from how not to, bigger channels get to do better videos. So subscribe to the channel, it really helps out. On with the video. So one more thing before we get started. I did my reassessment at Go Ropes in Poland. At Go Ropes, they have a great training facility, great instructors. This is Lukas right here and Lukas was my instructor for the level three. A great guy, we had a big group, we had 14 people, level ones, level twos, and level threes, separated by level. Everybody was helping each other. Great location, facility is beautiful. So go check them out at goropes.com. And thank you for getting me through to that reassessment. All right, into the video right now. All right, good people, new assignment. We're gonna put this dummy into an eight climb situation. Uh, I have certain rules to abide by and the main one being so I'm gonna put this dummy up there in an eight climb situation on these steels I'm gonna use these ropes for access and I can be suspended in them during the rescue afterwards ah one more thing one more thing. two more pulleys Piano, 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 see. There were a couple of Italians as well doing the level two. Ecco. Two more. Oh! 
So I just got some more gear to rig a pull through. Somebody shouting. A lot of shouting going on. Oh, that's shouting. So let's see if I cannot screw this one up. Talking about what I did the day before. This was the first exercise of day two. No. That's not quite. No, this was the second exercise. And the first exercise I screwed up in the live stream. So that's why I said it. I have an extra mic attachment to the GoPro, so it's very large on the helmet. And sometimes ropes get stuck. Slow and controlled. No rush. Thinking about if I would put the bag up next to me or not. And I should have done it differently because you will see that the bag will be right in front of the camera that's down below. Good spot. But not like this. Turn on the heater, so much noise. I wasn't cold, I was climbing. <laughs> So here you see me doing things that I usually teach different because I should have locked that carabiner straight away. And I just, I don't know, I just didn't. I do close it in the end before I do my final check of the system. But I like to teach people like when you close, just lock it off immediately. It's going to be a fixed anchor point. Nothing else is going in and out that carabine. Really not used to this shit anymore. Getting the backup. Now I lock the carabiner because I make my final connection to it, to the anchor point. So it is locked, but it would have been better if I locked it straight away. Doing some more rope management. 
making sure those blue ropes are not entangled in the casualty or in the dummy down there. Stuff just happens sometimes. This is part of the rope management. Lowering it out easily. I'm noticing there's a little loop on the white rope going around on the outside so I want to see if I can change it to make it a little bit more clean or I could have taken that whole yellow bag and moved it all the way around which was more work in the end I decided to just ah I'll leave it I'll deal with it <coughs> but that could made it worse so but that could dealing with it can later on in the process actually make it worse because there are going to be a little bit of a tangle that I have to monitor and looking back at it right now the solution was really easy but yeah. I don't know like I said I was not at my performing at 100% on the other side because sound check Sometimes I like to do these hanging holes just you know one to one because a three to one mechanical advantage will make it lighter but you have to move three times the amount of rope and with dummies being around 70 75 kilos I'm about 75 to 80 kilos so going into a one to one it's not that much harder but it's a lot less work it's physically a little bit more demanding but if you do it efficiently like I, like I do and it's just your weight. So I'll go down a little bit to get more of a, I can stand up straight and then pull down on the rope. And when you get this right, it's efficient, but it takes a few steps to get the right position. Then it's that you can just go big steps, big steps. And you can go really, really quick, but then it's going to be a lot of hard work or you can take it easy like what I'm doing here. I'm not in a rush. Step, big step up and then pull the rope down one two whoop, there we go so that's about maybe about a, almost a meter in one step stand up maybe one more meter so if I would have been a little bit lower in my blue rope on which I'm suspended in these steps would have been bigger and I'm using the pantan the foot loop uh, the foot uh, foot ascender to make big steps easy so you can actually go hand over hand over hand pulling in and the pulling motion you're doing is basically just uh, almost like breaking the friction and then when you get going it's your body weight the balance of the body weight so rope management clean out the mess because I know with the tangle there I need to monitor it Check my blue ropes that they stay out of the way. Foot loop in, get that foot as high as possible. And then first you stand up straight, put your full body weight in it and just hand over hand, pull yourself down. Sounds weird, but that's what happens. Foot as high as possible, stand up straight first. Man. 
managing that backup. This was mostly legs and arms, because I think I'm very close to the dummy and almost stepping onto it. Monitoring the tangles. One more big step, stand up. You see how easy, how easy that looks. Stand up, pull up. It's not that heavy. Just as long as you move it, just as long as you use your own body weight. Now the knot is almost into the clutch, I have about 15 centimeters left. I go up a little bit higher. Connect the Grillon from the casualty, trying to get his second point in, but the, the dummy needs to go up a little bit more. That much talking because I'm trying a one to one counterbalancing hole that is just a bit quicker, but it's also heavier. So I'm just a little bit out of breath because I'm a little bit out of shape. What I have done is connected his main connection point to Grillon in here. So if the assignment is to get him into a eight climbing position, I want to have my cat to be as rescuable as rescuable. possible. Um, so now that he's in his grillon, I can strip everything out, rig a pull through, lower him onto me and descend down. So I finish putting him in his uh, eight climbing situation and clean everything up for now. So I want to go up a little bit more. So I'll put the pontan or the foot ascender on my backup rope and stand up in that, then I don't need to. Sometimes it's easier and quicker than just getting the ascender and the foot loop out. And that counter is attached properly. Everything is locked, so we'll take the back up. Back up off. And I think this is was where my um, confusion started to set in. I can lower him on. So put in a doesn't really need to be closed, but I put in a friction carabiner. Officially, it's not necessary, I just learned. It's an advice or recommended, but not really necessary. And right now, especially with a short little lower like that, it's not very necessary. But we end up with a casualty suspended in a grillon and one cow tail. So now I'll we'll disconnect the ropes and I will start rigging a pull through and to do that I will go pretty easy actually so this is where I messed up because I should have let's see if I can get this one out I should have just cleaned up put him in two steels from the eight climb and then start performing the rescue where I lower the dummy down to the ground and then rig the pull through. I'll leave it there for now. So the end is connected in the bag. Well, it's not connected, but it's way long enough. So I will throw this one part. Oh, yeah, and uh, still running. in the group explanation, I got taught a different method of thinking about how to rig a pull through with steels. And that completely screwed me here. I, I, I sort of did, the same direction. but I messed up something. And I, I can't remember exactly what they, 
what uh, Lucas said when he was explaining it, but it's a very good method. If it's if it's your first time or but because I'm so used to doing something in a certain way, I messed up. Let me unmess it up. Let me tell you what I fucked up, uh, what I messed up. I can't put them like this. So this is where I got confused. I don't remember. It was not about the pull through confused, but I messed something else up about how he is suspended. Two points of connection. Oh yeah, that's what happened. Because I'm breaking the pool from the sharp steels. I'm like, oh, I need the two steels. So proper planning. No, and the dummy is that. I like challenge myself a little bit. So I did get in too fast, which is, you can see because right now I'm in sort of a, well, not problems, but I'm, I'm solving shit with it. That doesn't need to be solved. Actually. And I'm actually was on the right track, but, but no biggie. I got confused. I'm trying to free up the steels to use in the pull through. Which would have been a good training exercise as well. So now I and the casualty, we are both suspended in two anchor points. Stupid. <laughs> you stupid car. Connected, connected, connected. So you keep, keep checking, keep counting. I kind of messed myself up here. So weird how that can go when you're tired. But sometimes, oh, I forgot like a complete part of the task exercise. It's my own coat here. The ropes coming out of the bag, going over that beam. Now I'm going to do some rope management, make sure it's clean. Again. Same direction. Two. Tying the knots in the end. I'm thinking, what did he say? How did he say, tell me to do it? Alpine butterfly. Alpine butterfly. That's two. That one's two. <coughs> Oh, I remember what it was, yeah. If you rig it like this and where the rope goes over the beam and the steel goes underneath and then you set it by pulling it over, then you always make sure that you're pulling down rope is in the right way because if you do not do it in the right way which you can see in the video up here and i'll link it in the description of course i hope the gopro can still see it um then the retrieving of the rigging will be very hard but when i did this i'm installing it right now and then i looked wait if i pull it over the beam then the end of the rope 
is not touching the ground anymore. And maybe I cannot reach it. I could have, I think I could have reached it thinking back about it. So I'm going to resort to rigging it in a, in a way that I sort of understand and know and oh, you'll see. Checking to see if that knot reaches the ground, uh, decide, well, maybe I should change it a little bit. Funny. Teaching it is one thing, but suddenly screwing up is another thing. I'm just going to take this butterfly out and get like a meter, meter, meter? Yeah, like about a meter of extra rope. So it's a little bit lower above the ground or onto the ground, I don't remember that part. Taking out that old butterfly, uh, now I know where it's on the ground. Putting in a new butterfly. <laughs> language, language. Oh, there was a lot of cursing going on. Checking the distance to the ground, getting the second steel. Getting the pulley. Now I can already see it on the harness, but back then I couldn't find it. I could swear. I can change over. Lower these ropes out. Getting a bag out of the way to get a little bit more room to move and play around. Checking the system. Making a plan for the next step. I'm still connected on two points of attachment, the megawatt and the locker or the rocker by Cresto. I was going to go down with him. Do I need to lower him? Yes, you want to lower him? Ah, uh, okay, I'll change that. Yeah, I was going down with him on a pull through, but I'll change it over. Yeah. So here we go. So certainly, suddenly, change of plans. What's well, not a change of plan? I changed the plan halfway through, and I could just go reminded about the original plan. Thank you, Mateus. Change of plan. I need to lower him down, I forgot, but yeah, not really a big deal. This could have been on the steels I've used for the retrievable rigging. But I had the two seals next to me, so not a very big deal. 
Yeah, I think I might be a bit tired from travel and everything because this assignment was lower him down and I sure I just I don't know. I prepared prepared properly. And uh, that's why I only took two steals. So I prepared properly. And then I sort of I forgot basically. He's got one point of attachment. And we take this road. So I'm lowering the casualty on the retrieving part of the pull through. If you understand what I'm saying with it. With that. Alright. Just making sure my rope management is done properly. Because if I screw up now, I am sort of in trouble. So this should work. Oh, it's my A step. I'm still connected on the blue ropes and I three points in here somewhere yeah. right there. So I can use this ASAP to connect to this anchor point, take it off this rope. And, uh, this is where I want to be going. Quite a few people screw up. Like this. Watch this. I almost did. This will be exciting because, because everything is going room. back so and forth, back and forth, upside down, re rigging. Side. But always double check your system. This is better. Taking out the cow tail. So the check on his system was fairly quick. That's one. I think I need to close one more carabiner. Uh, that one, yep. Lock the handle. Let's lock, let's lock. I'm doing my double check because I think I'm not performing at my, what could have been expected of my level. I will take an extra redirect carabiner, which I just learned you actually do not need. I think for ups, upside down lowering, it is better to get a friction carabiner in there. For going in a two-person descent, you don't need it. I think I just did a little quick yeah, check. Be careful of these loops. Quick check that the ASAP is running. Mining the loops, you don't want to drop the dummy into them. A funny thing is when you do this, it immediately clears up the workspace. There's no more dummy in the way. Everything becomes more clear. Getting to talk because I'm just focusing on the task at hand. I want to get it done. I want to go down. <laughs> I don't feel too nice. Not too happy about this performance. Okay, clean up. So I lowered the casualty on the clutch and an ASAP. And I will use the clutch as my descender now. Again, there's so many different ways to do it. I'm still connected to three, well, two points actually. Two anchor points, three connections. Um, creating an actual third point by going into the clutch. Did I do the ASAP already? Yeah, the ASAP is on also. So right now I'm in four points.
So I like to first go <coughs> out of my D sender. Now I'm controlled and suspended and then I start cleaning up. Still checking again, do the ropes make it to the ground? Is everything long enough? No tangles, doing a double check before. One final check before I undo my original system. Go. Mm -hmm. Take out the new rope, my original ascending rope. Take out my backup. Right now I'm fully suspended in. Yeah, get creative, right? <laughs> and uh, barely long enough. And down we go. But now we have to see if that pull through comes out. Alright, moment of truth. go then it's time to disconnect the dummy and take out all the knots hungry and tired not feeling too well I'm performing like shit Oh yeah, I'm going really slow. I'll tell you in a minute why I'm going slow like this. So that's one coming down. So the thing I have to be really careful about is that this goes through that damn pulley. It's quite a long, thick plastic piece on it. Which is good to keep the label intact uh, here at your work sites. But for pull-throughs like this, it's not always the best. But I managed. It's coming down. Here we go. Could be better. Not so happy about that. So confused. But made it. So, made it. That was the second exercise of day two. And you know, I told you everything about it. Uh, not, what, not how I want to perform, but what can we do? The situation is we're not performing, so we stay calm, keep counting points, keep counting points, keep counting points, keep managing those ropes. And if you keep doing that every single step and keep moving forward, and if it becomes unclear, you step back and don't get frustrated about it, then you should be able to finish a task safely. <coughs> so, any comments, leave them below. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and always hit that notification bell to always be notified about a new upload. All right, I will see you in the next one. Stay connected.